Philippians chapter 1. I read from verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be by life or by death for to me to live is Christ and to die is King. Hallelujah. This is the confession of a man who has been able to see the Lord Jesus Christ. For a man to come to this point in his life, it takes one that has grown in knowledge by the Spirit of God. As far as Paul was concerned, what he was living for was that Christ be magnified in his body, whether it be by life or by death. It's according to my earnest expectation and my hope. It takes a man who has been able to see Christ to have this kind of testimony, confession of faith. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is King. Some are always quick to tell you that that was Apostle Paul and the calling that he had. Some will be quick to tell you everybody cannot be a preacher. Some are called to that vocation. We can not all be teachers. We can not all be preachers. It is for some. But according to Ephesians chapter 4, he said he gave gifts to men. Some he gave apostles. Some he gave prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors for the perfecting, equipping of the saints for the work of ministry towards the edification of the church. When a professor is teaching his students in the university, what is the expectation of the professor? Is it not that one day those students will become professors like him? That's the expectation. He's teaching them so that they will be knowledgeable in that profession or subject as it were. So that what he knows, the students can also learn and also come to the same understanding. That's why the scripture says, he has given gifts unto men. So the teacher is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that is teaching. He's the one that is using human vessels to teach. And the reason why he's teaching is such that those that are being taught will also come to understand. So when you say, we all cannot be preachers, all of us cannot be like Paul. Some of us have to be out there to get the money for the expansion of the kingdom of God. <laughs> in that place in Ephesians, he said, till we all come unto the unity of faith, to the perfect man, to the full knowledge of God. And to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. This is the reason why God has given gifts to men. So that men will come to the full knowledge of God. So that men will grow to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Unto that perfect man. So when you excuse yourself and tell yourself, we all cannot be like Apostle Paul. It means you have not had a proper understanding of the scriptures he said for me to live is christ and to die is gain we need to come to a point in our life where we begin to ask ourselves what am i living for am i living for my family children for my friends relations probably for my community or for my nation you are free to live for whatever you choose to live for but if you are born in the kingdom of God, you are not free to live for whatever you choose to live for. You have been born into the kingdom of God to live for Christ. That is our hope. For me to live is Christ. That is to say, the implication of what Paul is saying is that at every time 
when the radar of God goes through his heart to see the desire in his heart what he will see there is Christ if the radar of God should go through your heart what is he going to see remember that before him we are bare he sees the heart of every man he knows the thoughts of every man what is he going to see there is he going to see 20 story building mansion in the village mansion abroad or is he going to see the choices of cards what is he going to see there empires business empires what is he going to see in your heart is he going to see christ for me to live is christ <laughs> if christ has not eaten up every desire in you it means that you have not known him when the disciples came to jesus after he had met with the woman of samaria they offered him food to eat he said i have food to eat meat to eat that you know not all and they were saying in their hearts what could it be that this man is talking about could it be that that woman we just saw i've given him something he said my meat is to do the will of god this was the desire that was burning in his heart my will is to do the will of god some will say he is jesus christ but he came to show you and i how to live for the father he said for me to live is christ i have no other desire in my heart other than christ absolute that was why Paul was ready. He said that Christ be magnified in my body, whether in life or by death. I count everything but dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. He said, What I had counted as gain, I consider I, I suffer loss for all those things that i may win christ that i may win christ what are you still seeking for are you seeking for the lord jesus christ for me to live is christ i've come to a point in my life that nothing else matters to me it's all about him and him alone I know not of any other but him. This is the point that God is seeking for his children to come to. If Christ has not become your all, you have not known him. The writer of the Hebrews calls him the express image of his person. The brightness of his glory. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is he to you? What does he mean to you? Have you been able to understand that he is the image of the invisible god the scripture says that all things were created by him and without him was not anything made that was made he is before all things he said he created everything in the world whether they be in heaven or on earth whether they be thrones dominions rulers principalities the scripture says all things were created by him and for him that's the person we are talking about mm. he said he, that he upholds all things by the word of his power he said by him all things consist hallelujah for me to live is christ i pray that god will open our eyes so that we'll begin to see him the reason why we are still chasing shadows is because we have not been able to see him i still pray that even in this morning service that god will help you to see him hallelujah let's turn our bibles to genesis the book of genesis chapter 3. if we are not able to understand where it all began we will not be able to follow god in his wisdom as he would want as he would want us to follow him now god had told adam 
concerning the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he said of this tree do not eat but for every other tree you can eat but when the time of reckoning came the serpent said unto the woman in verse 4 from verse 5 he said for god doth know in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden of in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god amongst the trees of the garden and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said who told thee that thou was naked Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Praise the Lord. The whole problem of man began when man took of the fruits of this tree. For you to understand the will of God, you must understand the genesis of the problem. If you do not understand the genesis of the problem, you will not be able to understand God. The problem of man began in the day he took of this fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And immediately that took place, darkness, darkness came upon the heart of man. Before that time, man was covered in the glory of God. He was immersed, as it were, in the light of God. But immediately he took of that fruit darkness darkness entered the heart of man and immediately that darkness entered that's what the scripture says here in verse 7 it says the eyes of them both were opened when their eyes opened darkness their eyes being opened meant darkness entered their heart that's what it means they lost out from the light of God. Their eyes opened. They were covered with the glory of God. But when they ate of that fruit, their eyes opened. Darkness entered their heart. And the darkness that entered their heart was the knowledge of good and evil. It was not just evil. It was the knowledge of good and and evil when men talk about darkness they talk about evil the darkness that entered the heart of man was the knowledge of good and evil it was not just evil it was both good and evil it was darkness darkness i want you to understand the picture and the first thing they did as a result of that darkness that entered their heart was that they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Their eyes were opened. They became aware of darkness. That's how come they knew they were naked because the glory of God was covering them before them. But when their eyes opened, darkness entered their hearts, they knew they were naked. And the first thing they did was to plug leaves from the tree to make aprons to cover themselves. The leaves in the Garden of Eden were not meant to be used for aprons. If they had remained covered in the glory of God, there would have been no need to utilize the leaves from that tree for apron. It was the darkness in their heart that brought about that action praise the lord that was not 
the original intention of God for man. This knowledge of good and evil as it were God never wanted man to double into it because it constituted vanity vanity that's what it was all about vanity God knew that what it will do to man will be to darken his heart and if the heart of man becomes darkened then man will not be able to see God as he ought to see God because what will happen is that the knowledge of that good and evil will blow his from seeing God for who he is that was how man entered into problem I'm giving you the genesis of the matter so that you'll understand who this Christ is immediately that darkness entered the heart of man man became desperate because the implication of knowledge of good and evil means that you will go after it that's the implication you go after it you, there is an immediate quest quest that's why the devil said to them when you your eyes your eyes will be opened and you will become like God you become like God in the sense that you will now as the as the knowledge comes to you as you grow in the knowledge of good or evil what happens to you is that you continue to go after it first quest quest what are you seeking for there is something in you that is craving for fullness as it were craving for fatness satisfaction there is a deep hunger inside of you for what you don't know but what keeps happening to you is that because your heart is darkened you are completely seeking or, or continually seeking for what will bring that fullness to you as you open your eyes to good you think probably this is where it's going to come from you open your eyes to evil you think this is where it's going to come from and you continue going after it but it's all vanity that's why you will never be satisfied it's all vanity you will never never be satisfied And that was what God never wanted man the problem that God never wanted man to enter into but immediately he ate of that fruit that problem began now if you read further you find out that God placed a curse on man he placed a curse on the woman and on the serpent Many people are looking for cause. <laughs> you think that was the cause that came upon man? 
that man will toil all the days of his life to eat bread you think that's the cause <laughs> the real problem of man is this darkness in his heart the quest for things the insatiable quest for things that's the problem that's the real cause God only made it harder for man in the sense that as you begin to seek satisfaction in these things it will become more difficult for you in the sense that you are not going to have it as you would want it are you getting the problem but the original problem of man the original cause that man brought upon himself is that darkness that enters his, his heart that quest insatiable quest for things are you getting the point that's the problem of man chaos that's what it's called that's where man's problem began and when adam was cast out of the garden of eden is it that he didn't know god he knew god immediately that knowledge that quest began to grow a man and he began to seek for how he will make his life more comfortable and habitable in the face of the difficulties in the face of the problems that surrounded him he began to look for ways out of his misery ways out of the weakness that has enveloped man as a consequence of the darkness that entered his heart remember the darkness that entered the heart of man is the knowledge of good and evil not just evil it was two of them combined man began this insatiable quest for things and as a result of that quest for things he became desperate he became desperate and being that god had told him that look this is what you are going to go through in your life in order to satisfy this quest in your heart he began to seek for other gods <laughs> man is a desperate being <laughs> he began to seek for other gods that's how come man began to worship moon he began to worship sun he began to look for desperate measures to come out of his misery he began to seek for god he knew the god that his father worshipped because there is no way that Adam could not have passed the knowledge of God to his sons they knew but they were desperate because things were not working out as they wanted it and they began to seek for other gods that will help them in their quest to have things in their quest to have things that as it were they thought that would bring satisfaction for them that's how Kong man began to worship other gods they began to worship other other gods and look for ways out of their misery because darkness in the heart of man is chaos is a sorry state of man Because everything represented there is vanity upon vanity. When God saw the desperation of man and how his heart has become desperately evil in the, in the sense that man began to recognize other things as, as gods and began to worship those things and knowing fully well that, you know, God, there is only one God, creator of the heavens and the earth, but he still, because of his desperation, be 
began to seek those other gods. Remember that man had taken the knowledge of good and evil. And of course, in employing that knowledge that the you know that he had he had obtained, he he got into some things to know that he could he could begin to worship the, the, the god of the moon, the god of the thunder, the stars. And the rest of them he began to grow in his knowledge of evil and in that knowledge of evil he was growing in he was receiving as it were he thought it was working for him those things that God denied him I get in the point that's what embolden them in what they were doing because those other gods that they were worshipping allow them to grow as it were in the course of evil remember there is no other god but the god of our lord jesus christ but because of his evil heart he believed and the god of moon god of thunder god of lightning other gods and he began to create images of those gods to worship them and when god saw the desperation of man and how evil that man had become in his ways and in his thoughts in the book of genesis says the bible said god regretted look at it in verse 5 and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth that every of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord that's in Genesis 6 I'm trying to let you know the history of the problem of man After that God wiped away humanity as it were through the flood God gave man a second chance through Noah to see whether man will consider him and change his ways but he didn't stop because the heart of man continued to grow or to grow desperately evil after the flood a man named Nimrod when he heard about how God destroyed the first world I'm trying to show you the desperation of man the problem of man because if you understand the problem of man you will understand who Christ is to you Nimrod gathered men when he heard of what God did he became desperate they decided that they were going to build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven lest that God will scatter them because he knew that if they were united as it were in purpose and in everything they were pursuing 
that they will go a long way in asserting themselves having things their own way and that was how they began to build the tower of babel they were determined to build it to the heavens so that if god decides again to utilize flood <laughs> to wipe out the earth it will not be uh, easy for him to carry it out because then they will keep climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing to make sure that the flood does not carry them away what i'm trying to tell you is this man in his desperation for things quest for things in his desperation for things refused to acknowledge god but began to worship other gods with whom they thought they were going to have their way since that god didn't want to help them out god when he looked at the misery of man at the at the hopeless situation of man at the sorry state of man offered man a way out and that way out he offered man was that he was going to provide for man he was going to provide for man as long as man on the condition that man was going to keep his law and his commandments that is that man was going to believe one that he is the only god praise the lord on the condition that man was going to believe and accept that he is the only god and keep his commandments and his commandment as it were as at that time was that the evil aspects of the knowledge that man took from the garden of eden god said it was undesirable as far as he was concerned knowing that he had a plan for christ to come into the world at a later time as long as man engages more and more in the evil knowledge there was the likelihood that god could wipe out man even before Christ came. Are you getting the point? So he gave man law, an offer to provide for man, to satisfy that quest, that yearning for things that man had in his heart. Now, remember the genesis of the problem was that man began to seek other gods that will provide him things and as far as man was concerned any other god that provided him what he needed became his god are you following what i'm saying so when now god offered to provide man things as it were as long as he acknowledged that he was the only god and kept his commandments now god accepting to provide for man the things that he needed did not want man to call him god because he was providing for him are you getting the the problem this is the problem because if man recognized him as god because he was providing for them then it means that whoever that can provide for man becomes god are you getting the point that was not what god wanted because in his relationship original relationship with adam his relationship with adam was not based on things his relationship with adam was based on who he is are you getting the point but now because god accepted to give man offer man things to in order for him to obey him acknowledge him as god and keep his commandments he 
instead of man to begin to understand God for who he is man because of the darkness of his heart because of the darkness of his heart now began to call God God because he was providing for him are you getting the point that was the relationship that man had with God uh, with the other gods as it were and there is no way that God would want man to have the same kind of relationship with him are you getting the point I'm making God every man thinks did not want man to see him as God because he offered him things God wanted man to see him as God because of who he is not because that he provided man things but man being darkened in his heart knowing that because of the desperation of his heart his breast for things his insatiable appetite for things still reduced the relationship to things are you getting the point he began to serve God for things but that was not the intention of God that was why the law failed are you getting the point that's why the law failed because the law man started keeping the law honoring God because God was providing him things and remember that the quest for things was as a result of the darkness in the heart of man are you getting the point so God will not reduce himself to be the God of man because he's the one providing things for man are you getting the point please I want you to understand this part because it's very critical in our relationship with God today in our lives today this is the problem of Christianity today this is the problem that we have today the problem that we have today is that man's relationship with God is based on things it is based on things that's the problem that's the problem that's why we can never know God for who he is because we have based our relationship with God on things and God does not want that he doesn't want that it does not give him pleasure when we relate with God based on things this was why the law was not acceptable because the man, man now used the law as a condition as a basis to relate with God based on things praise the Lord turn your Bible to Matthew I bothered to give you this background because if you don't have the background you will not be able to know what Jesus Christ is saying look at Matthew chapter 6 from verse 24 I read no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap neither gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his statue and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these wherefore if god so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe you o ye of little faith take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or where we die, shall be, be clothed for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things 
but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you are you seeing it it said in verse 31 it said therefore take note of saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or whither shall we be clothed it's saying do not base your relationship with God on things that your heavenly father is much more bigger than these things and he talked about the fowls of the air the lilies of the field and he said can't you see how God provides for the fowls of the air that do not sow do that neither do they reap or neither do they gather into bands yet God feeds them telling you what is he trying to tell you that God is much more than what you have reduced him to or what you are trying to reduce him to he's not God is not about providing for you God is much bigger than providing for you do not reduce your relationship with God based on things being provided that's what Jesus is saying that God is bigger much bigger than these things now seek the kingdom seek for the kingdom now what he's saying is that now seek to know god for who he is this is the reason why you should relate with god seek to know god for who he is and every other thing that you need shall be added to you Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It says, For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. If your relationship with God is based on things, I'm sorry to let you know that you have no relationship at all with him whether you are professing you are born again or that you know jesus christ you are only deceiving yourself if your relationship with him is based on things you don't know him that's simply what jesus christ is saying seek ye to know god for who he is seek to know god for who he is and every other thing that you need shall be added to you the things that you think that you need are not the things that you need only God knows what you need because God understands that everything in this world is vanity upon vanity that's why John said do not love the world nor what is in the world for the love of the world is enmity with god for what is in the world the loss of the eyes the loss of the flesh and the pride of life he said the world and its loss they pass it away but he that doeth the will of god shall abide forever god knows that these things a vanity so he's asking you to live chasing after vanity and begin to seek to know him for who he is and in your seeking him for who he is who he is he knows what you will need in this vain world to carry you along for his work to be perfected in you your relationship with god is not about things when you base your relationship with god on things there is no difference between you and that man that does not have any relationship with god because he is still worshiping whatever he thinks that it is his god because of what he is providing for him whether he's worshiping man or graven image or animal or whatever he is worshipping 
the relationship is based on the things that are being provided for him now if your relationship with god is on the same basis you have no relationship with god that's why he said you must seek to know him for who he is that's why it is only in christ that you can find peace and rest of mind what does peace and rest of mind translate into what happens to you when you are found in christ is that you will find out that your quest for things your desire for things is curtailed are you getting what i'm saying is curtailed and almost non-existent what does that tell you it tells you that your being in christ the glory of god has covered that problem that you have that problem is that insatiable desire insatiable quest for things that's what the glory of god covers in your life in christ and the reason why he covers it is such that you will be able to know god for who he is so if your relationship with god is still based on things you don't know god you don't know him god does not wish that man will relate with him based on things that's how the idolaters relate with their god knowledge of god should tell you that it is not the same way god will want to have us to grow in the knowledge of who he is and this is what jesus christ this is who he is to you that's why the scriptures says in john in the book of john it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god it said the same was with god in the beginning in him was life and the life was the light of man it said the light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not in him was life and the life was the light of man the only way you can have access to this light this life as it were is when the glory of god has completely covered that quest that you have that insatiable quest that you have for things when the glory of god covers it what happens is that you will begin to seek this life because the, the scriptures has already said told us that in him was life and the life was the light of men in john 17 jesus said this is life eternal that you may know the true god and his only son jesus christ whom he has sent he said in that pleasant place in john he said father the words that you have given me i have given them and they have received it what are those words they are the words of eternal life they are the words that are meant to form eternal life in you these are the words that jesus has given which the apostles in their epistles have expounded on those words they are the words that form eternal life that's why he said in him was life and that life was the light of men he said that was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world so the intention of god for man the will of god for man is that we may be able to comprehend the length the depth the width the breadth of that light so that eternal life will be formed inside of us god wants us that as we are relating with him that relationship will be all about that light that knowledge of christ that's the only way we can please god and in relating with him in growing in the knowledge of 
who he is he has given us his word because for him providing for us is the least the least of things that God could do for man the least of things that God could do for man God wants your eyes to be open to know that what he's talking about is empowering you with his life giving you the same life that he has that's his interest that's what he wants to do he wants to form the same life that he has inside of you that's what God is talking about that is the will of God and you can that life cannot be formed in you if you are still immersed in the quest for things because that's darkness he said the light shineth in darkness he said darkness comprehended it not that knowledge of good and evil is the darkness that is covering man today that's the reason why man cannot relate with God he says my ways are not your ways neither are my thoughts your thoughts I do not operate in the same frequency that you operate I cannot think the way you think my ways are not your ways it cannot be according to the knowledge of good and evil neither that can my thoughts be according to the knowledge of good and evil God is all about himself and what he's doing for himself he wants you he wants to enlist you into his scheme of things into his program and the only way you can come into his program is by comprehending this eternal life that's the only way you can please God God never intended man he never intended man from day one that's why he said in him was life and that life was the light of men that was all that what God wanted from man that that light will continue to be the life of men but instead man chose darkness man chose darkness and that was the problem that man entered into when he chose darkness darkness is the knowledge of good and evil god does not want us to relate with him in any way based on that knowledge can we stand on our faith